Chris, what are you doing? Throwing alcohol. Oh, alcohol. Oh my goodness. What's up guys? As you heard, Chris is finally going alcohol. And so I wanted to take the time to show you guys exactly what is needed. We're not gonna get through everything today on his, but I wanted to show you what was needed to convert your car from gasoline to alcohol. Check it out. There is no intercooler on this thing. The radiators. That thing's a little tiny. I ain't got but one, I ain't got but one weld to make. Dang, that ain't gonna take me but two seconds. Chris is going alcohol. He's got some of these nice precision 550 injectors. That's the same thing I got. Those things are awesome. These injectors flow a ton of fuel. They were probably one of the first set of injectors to ever be at such a high rating. They flow 550 pounds of fuel per hour. That is a lot of fuel, a whole lot of fuel. Now the atomization is not the best on these things. I mean, it's just the way they're designed. Uh, billet atomizers are one of the other very, very popular, really good brands. But this is a really nice injector and you can find them used pretty cheap. They are a little hard to control when you're trying to slow down the, you know, idle and coming up on boost on a very small motor, but they still work. It just takes a little bit more time to dial in the fuel map. But there was an old video on YouTube. You can search it. It's the Mike Moran. He, he put this injector against like one of his, which is the billet atomizer. It was just stamped with his and the flow pattern is crazy. I love watching it in slow motion. But the volume of fuel is what we're concerned about. A precision 550 injector and a billet atomizer 550 injector, they flow the same amount of fuel. And when you're switching your car from gasoline to methanol, you gotta have a bigger injector. So you need to do your math, you need to check out your brake specific fuel consumption. Every engine's a little bit different, but alcohol boosted typically is about 1.8 to 2.2 brake specific fuel consumption. So when you do the very basic math, we got eight injectors, 550 pounds per hour. So that's gonna give you 4,400 pounds per hour of fuel flow. And that's at 100% duty cycle, which you never wanna run them at 100% duty cycle. So that very basic math, 4,400 pounds of fuel divided by two, assuming you got 2.0 brake specific fuel consumption, that would mean that injector set at 100% duty cycle could support 2,200 horsepower. So now you take that number and you multiply it by 0.85, which will be an 85% duty cycle, about 1,900 horsepower or so if you're at a 2.0 brake specific fuel consumption. Now every motor is a little bit different. Every engine is different. My motor is less than 2.0. Mine is down about 1.7 ish on the brake specific fuel consumption best I can guess looking at the fuel maps. So everything is a little bit different. Every engine is a little different, but you gotta do the basic math. For sure, when you're going to methanol, when you're going to alcohol, you gotta have bigger injectors. So another thing, a lot of people, when they switch over to methanol, they automatically assume that they can take all the water out of the engine. And sometimes that's okay, but sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes you need to keep water in the motor. You need to keep it in the heads just so it doesn't have hot spots. So what Chris is gonna do, he, he got this little adapter from Jegs, and so he simply is gonna loop the bottom of the water pump to the upper intake, and that'll still allow water to circulate through the motor to eliminate any type of hot spots. And so that's a good thing. I cracked two sets of heads and I fully believe it was from not having water in the heads. Okay, we're going to weld this up. Did you decide where you want to put your blow off valve? Yeah. All right, let's mark it. We'll, we'll go weld this thing together real fast. So this thing's going to be nice. So he's going to do that, go. Did you decide where you're going to mount the fuel pump? Right, I'm going to mount the fuel pump down here. Just going to mount it down low on the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room down there. What is that? Yeah, I think he'll be fine. And then, I mean, he's, he got, he picked up a used Enderly pump from Carl. Um, what is it, like 13 gallons a minute? 13.2. I mean, that thing's worth, no, 13.2, that's, I think mine's 9.9 .9 or 11 or Thanks, something Carl. like that. Carl Simmons with the hookup, Simmons High Performance. We're over here at Brian's shop at B&K Performance tonight. Um, so we're gonna work on this a little bit. Okay, let's talk about fuel pumps for a minute. So when you're converting to alcohol, when you're going over to methanol, you've got to upgrade your fuel pump. There are some nice big electric fuel pumps out there, but as far as I know, no single one fuel pump that is electric can ever supply the amount of fuel you're going to need. 
So you got to run a mechanical fuel pump. Now, there are some companies that make these. They're cable drive. So you have a, a belt and pulley system in the front, a cable. The fuel pump is in the back. So you can still have a rear mounted fuel cell. But it is still a mechanical fuel pump. It is driven directly off of the crankshaft, off of the lower pulley. You're going to have a gear. And so you can change the speed of the pump based on the gearing and the teeth count. So this is very important. You got to have a big mechanical fuel pump. So we use Enderly. You can pick these up from Alki Digger. That's who generally we use because they're close and they're very reasonably priced. But they have different gallons per minute in different sizes. Now this one that Chris is going to use is a 110. It flows about 11 gallons per minute. So let's do some funny math real fast. See what this works out to be. So we looked at the injector flow a few minutes ago. We got a total of 4,400 pounds an hour of fuel. So you take that 4,400 pounds, a gallon of methanol weighs about 6.6 .6 pounds. So what you gotta do at this point is you divide 4,400 divided by 6.6. .6. So when you do that math, that equals 666 gallons per hour. So that is what your fuel pump has to be able to flow. So now you do that next math step, you divide that number by 60, and that gives you gallons per minute. So that basic math tells you, you gotta have a pump that is capable of flowing about 11 gallons per minute if you were trying to get 4,400 pounds of fuel flow. So that is a huge volume of fuel. So that's a lot of fuel flow. So that's why you need a big mechanical pump. Now, before anybody says, well, I've got a big electric fuel pump and it flows 500 gallons per hour or 600 or 750 gallons per hour. You're right, it does. But the difference is if you look at those charts, the chart that comes with the pump, if they publish it, then it's gonna be at a very, very low pressure. That is gallons per hour that is free flow. This Enderly pump, these belt drive pumps, they will flow 11 gallons an hour at like 100, 110, 120 PSI. There's a bunch of different ones, but this is just a manual drive pump. This thing has a lollipop that goes on the end here, and that's how it mounts. It's really easy. We usually use Alki Digger. There goes the lollipop that mounts on here, and then you got your bracket. Super easy to mount these things. And the good thing about these pumps, if you notice this piece right here, in the middle, this piece here is off a little bit. So you can rotate it. So you can make this pump, it, it, it can go counterclockwise or clock, uh, clockwise. All you do to rotate this pump to make it go the other way is take these bolts out and then twist this to where it's opposite, to where this will be on this side, and then it will be the opposite rotation. So it's pretty cool. I mean, these pumps are awesome. Uh, cast iron, I mean, they don't look the best, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, they flow great, they're cheap, and they last forever. Fit over function. That's right, fit over function. I mean, you could get it one of those nice billet ones. They actually make billet ones too, but they're super expensive. So that's a nice fuel pump here. He won't ever run out of fuel. Between this fuel pump and those injectors, we probably got about 2,000 horsepower worth of fuel. You ready to turn the boost up? I don't know. Is that a yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna turn it up. Turn the boost up. Man, that's a good place right there. That thing looks awesome. So he's coming along. So he should be maybe this week, man. I don't know. This week or next week. Good headlight. Uh -huh. <laughs> we've had a lot of failures five, with this truck. Five hours of nothing. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of failures. So maybe going to alcohol and it'll be a little easier on us. I don't know. We'll see. So the next thing on the list, this is a picture of Brian's, is this front mounted fuel cell. Unless you got a cable drive pump, you gotta put the fuel cell up front just so you can gravity feed the pump. But that's usually not that big a deal. So you gotta find room for the fuel cell up front. But mechanically, switching from gasoline to methanol is not that bad. You gotta get bigger injectors, you gotta get a bigger fuel pump, front mount fuel cell, and then, you know, obviously bigger lines, you gotta have some different fuel filtration. They make some, System One makes a really good filter setup, but it's very, very easy mechanically. Now, one of the big advantages, huge advantages, 
Look at the amount of weight Chris was able to drop off of this. He took the air to water intercooler off. He lost all the piping associated with it. He lost the water lines. He lost the water pump for the intercooler. He lost his tank that held five or seven gallons worth of ice water. This is a huge reduction in weight by going from gasoline to methanol. The next big thing that is huge that makes racing a lot more economical is the price of methanol. You can get a 55 gallon drum of M1 for a little over 150 bucks. So it generally works out to be about $3 a gallon. That is so much cheaper than racing gas. Yes, it uses about double the volume of fuel. So even when you do that fuzzy math, I mean, $3 a gallon times two, that's six bucks. So at the most, it's $7 equivalent to a gallon of gasoline. You're not finding C16 or C23 or any of those other fuels nowhere near that cheap per gallon. Another advantage methanol has is it's really torquey. It's a little more torquey over the gasoline counterparts. But honestly, in my opinion, a well-tuned Q16 car with a very good air to water intercooler, it's gonna make about the same power as methanol. Methanol is gonna make a little bit more, but not significant. But there's a whole lot of other advantages to the methanol other than the power. But there are a few disadvantages to methanol. It's alcohol, so you constantly have to watch out for corrosion. It absorbs water, so you want to, you know, stop it from being exposed to air as much as possible. The motor is going to sit a long time. I would probably suggest having an E85 or possibly even better, like a gasoline tune-up. So you could put some gas in the motor, crank it up, and let it run. And so the gasoline oils and chemicals can lubricate the cylinder walls. Because, I mean, alcohol is alcohol. It's going to dry that stuff out. But I have been running alcohol for a very long time now, and I really like it. It really is super easy fuel to tune as well. Of course, you're going to need to retune your EFI system. Depending on what you have, it could be easy or it could be difficult. We run Holly, so it's really easy. For this system, it really is just a matter of making sure you have an NTK sensor and readjusting all the tables. And of course, you'll need a good high flow system one fuel filter and larger diameter lines, and then you should be set to go. All right, guys, well, that's the basics of converting to alcohol. I just wanted to show y'all what we were doing on Chris's truck, but y'all stay tuned, and we'll have this thing fired up soon and hopefully going out and making some passes. Have fun. See y'all. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks.